Section 9, Hazardous Materials. This manual covers the intent of regulations, hazardous materials transportation, who does what, communication rules, loading and unloading, bulk packaging, marking, loading and unloading, hazardous materials driving and parking rules, hazardous materials emergencies, hazardous materials glossary. Introduction. Hazardous materials are products that pose a risk to health, safety, and property during transportation. The term is often shortened to hazmat, which you may see on road signs or to or to HM in government regulations. Hazardous materials include explosives, various types of gases, solids, flammable, and combustible liquids, and other materials. Because of the risks involving involved and the potential consequences these risks impose, all levels of government regulate the handling of hazardous materials. The Hazardous Material Regulations, HMR, are found in Parts 100 to 185 of Title 49, Transportation, of the Code of Federal Regulations. The, com the common reference for these regulations is 49 CFR 100 to 185. The Hazardous Materials table in the regulations contain a list of these items. However, this list is not all inclusive. Whether or not an unlisted material is considered is considered hazardous is based on its characteristics and the shipper's decision on whether or not the material meets a definition of hazardous material in the regulations. The regulations require vehicles transporting certain types of quantities of hazardous materials to display a diamond-shaped square on point warning sign called play cards. This section is designed to assist you in understanding your role and responsibilities in hauling hazardous materials. Due to the constantly changing nature of government regulations, it is impossible to guarantee absolute accuracy of the materials in this section. An up-to-date copy of the complete regulations is essential for you to have. Included in these regulations is a complete glossary of terms. Find out where you can get your own copy to use on the job. You can get copies of the federal regulations, 49 CFR, through various industry publishers. Union or company offices often have copies of the rules for drivers to use. If you have internet access, you can get copies of federal regulations at the following websites. For online viewing, HTML, go to http dot slash ecfr dot g p o access dot gov, which is a beta test site of the Code of Federal Regulations, where you can view the Title 49 transportation codes. To order publications, visit the Government Printing Office online bookstore at htpbookstore.gpo.gov. Licensing requirements. You must have a valid New York State Commercial Driver's License, CDL, with a hazardous material endorsement before you drive any size vehicle that is used in the transportation of any material that requires hazardous material placarding, or any quantity of a material listed as a select agent or toxin in 42 CFR 73, Title 42, Public Health, Part 73, Select Agents and Toxins. New York State issues three hazmat endorsements. Hazmat H, Hazmat Tank X, Farm Hazmat Z. New York State Vehicle and Traffic Laws 502, 2A requires that an applicant for H or X hazmat endorsement shall be at least 21 years of age. To qualify for a hazmat endorsement, you must pass the hazardous material knowledge test. For the H and X endorsement, you must also pass federal and state background checks. Driving type self certification and medical certification. In order to hold the H or X hazmat endorsement, a driver must self-certify to a non-exempted driving type, NI or NA. 
and provide a current U.S. DOT medical examiner's certificate to the DMV. See sections 1.3.4 through 1.3.5 for an information about self-certification, driving type, and medical examiner cert certif for certificates. Written test. You must pass a written test about federal hazmat regulations and requirements. Passing score is 80. There is a fee for this test. If you do not pass the test on your first try, you may take it again as often as, as necessary until you pass the test. However, you must pay the fee each time you take the test. Everything you need to know to pass the written test is in this section. However, this is only a beginning. Most drivers need to know much more on the job. You can learn more by reading and understanding the federal and state rules applicable to hazardous materials, as well as attending hazardous material training courses. Your employer, colleagues, and universities and various associations you usually offer these courses. Renewals. Prior to expiration, expiration of the HAZMAT endorsement, you will receive a renewal notice. If you want to renew by federal law and state law, you must re reapply for the endorsement so that new background checks can be conducted. You must be fingerprinted every time you renew the HAZMAT endorsement. See the background check section below for additional information. You do not have to take and pass the HAZMAT written test at this time. You must pay for and pass the HAZMAT written knowledge test within two years before you re renew your CDL. If you do not pass the test before your CDL expires, your CDL will be renewed without the HAZMAT endorsement. Background Checks Section 1012 of the U.S. Patriot Act and Section 5016 of the New York State Vehicle and Traffic Law require fingerprint-based background checks for all applicants for the H and X hazmat endorsement. The background checks are done to determine whether an individual has a criminal history and or possesses a security threat and warrants denying him or her authorization to transport hazardous material. To initiate the background checks, you must complete Form HAZ44, Application for Hazardous Material Endorsement, submit proofing of your residency, and pay the required fees. Then you must be fingerprinted at an authorized fingerprinting service provider. All HAZMAT endorsements, all HAZMAT endorsements applicants, both first time and renewal, must complete the HAZ600 and be fingerprinted at one of the designated fingerprinting centers located throughout New York State. Fingerprinting services are no longer available at DMV offices. Additional information is available at www.dmv.newyork.gov slash cdl.htm. If you fail a background check, you will be notified that you do not qualify for the HAZMAT endorsement. The notice will provide information about appeal options available to you under federal and or state law. All disqualifications take effect immediately. Period of validity. If you pass the written knowledge test and both federal and state background check, you may be issued an H or X hazmat endorsement. Only the written knowledge test is required for the farm hazmat Z. Endorsement. The CDL that you receive will show the legend HAZMAT and the HAZMAT expiration date on the face of the document. Although your CDL is valid for 8 years, your HAZMAT endorsement is valid for 5 years. From the date the DMV receives notification that you pass the background checks, you will receive separate renewal notices in the mail it, when it's time to renew each one. Transferals Recoprogency if you become a resident of New York State and want to transfer a CDL with HAZMAT endorsement that you have in your previous state of residency, you may apply for the endorsement. You must take and pass the HAZMAT written test in New York State, apply, pay all applicable fees, and then be fingerprinted in New York State so that a background check can be conducted. Continuous training requirements. The regulations require training and testing for all drivers 
involved in transporting hazardous materials. Your employer or designated representative is required to provide this training and testing. Hazardous material employ employers are required to keep a record of that training on each employee as long as that employee is working with hazardous materials and for 90 days thereafter. The regulations require that hazardous material employees be trained and tested at least once every three years. All drivers must be trained in the security risks of hazardous material transportation. This training must include how to recognize and respond to possible security threats. The regulations also require that drivers have special training before driving a vehicle, transporting certain flammable gas material or highway route controlled quantities of radioactive materials. In addition, drivers transporting cargo tanks and portable tanks must receive special training. Each driver's employer or his or her designated representative must provide such training. Special hauling requirements. Some locations require permits to transport certain explosives or, or bulk hazardous wastes. States and counties also may require drivers to follow a special hazardous material routes. The federal government may require permits or exemptions for special hazardous material cargo, such as rocket fuel. Find out about permits, exemptions, and special routes for the place you, places you drive. 9.1 the intent of regulations 9.1.1 contain the material transporting hazardous materials can be risky regulations are intent are intended to protect you those around you and the environment they tell shippers how to package the materials safely and drivers how to load transport and unload the materials these are called containment rules 9.1.2 Communicate the risks. To communicate the risks, shippers must, must warn drivers and others about materials hazards. The regulations require shippers to put a hazard warning label on packages, provide proper shipping papers, emergency response information, and placards. These steps communicate the hazards to the shipper, the carrier, and the driver. 9.1.3 Ensure safe drivers and equipment. In order to get hazardous material endorsement on a CDL, you must pass a written test about transporting hazardous materials. To pass the test, you must know how to identify what are hazardous materials, safely load and secure shipments, properly placard your vehicle in accordance with the rules, safely transport shipments. Learn the rules and follow them. Following the rules reduces the risk of inju injury from hazardous materials. Taking shortcuts by breaking rules is unsafe. Non-compliance with regulations can result in fines and jail. Inspect your vehicle before and during each trip. Law enforcement officers may stop and inspect your vehicle. When stopped, they may check your shipping papers, vehicle placarding, and the hazardous material endorsement on your driver's license, and your knowledge of hazardous, mater of hazardous materials. 9.2 Hazardous material transportation. Who does what? The shipper. Sends products from one place to another by truck, rail, vessel, or airplane. Uses, uses hazardous material regulations to determine the product's proper shipping name, hazard class, identification number, packing group, correct pack packaging, the correct label and markings, correct placards. Must package, mark, and label the materials prepared, prepare shipping papers, provide emergency response information, and supply placards. Certify the shipping paper that the shipment has been prepared according to the rules, unless you are pulling cargo tanks supplied by you or your employer. 9.2.2 The Carrier Take shipment from the shipper to its destination. Prior to transportation, checks that the shipper correctly described, marked, labeled, and otherwise prepared the shipment for its transportation, refuse improper shipments, reports accidents and incidents involving hazardous materials to the proper government agency. 9.2.3 The Driver Make sure the shipper has identified, marked, and labeled the hazardous material properly, refuses leaking packages, 
and shipments, placard his vehicle when loading if required, safely transport the shipment without delay, follows all special rules about transporting hazardous material, keeps hazardous material, shipping papers, and emergency response information in the proper place. Figure 9.1 Hazardous Material Class Class 1 Division 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 1.5, and 1.6 Name of Class Explosives Examples Dynamite, flares, display fireworks, ammunition, blasting agents, explosive devices. Class 2. Division 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. Name of class. Flammable gases, non-flammable gases, poisonous, toxic gases. Examples. Propane, helium, fluorine, compressed. Class 3. Name of class, flammable liquids, combustible liquids. Examples are gasoline and fuel oil. Class 4, Division 4.1, 4.2, and 4.3. Name of class, flammable solids, spontaneously combustible, dangerous when wet. Examples, aluminum pitrate, wetted, white phosphorus, and sodium. Class 5. Five, division 5.1, 5.2, name of class, oxidizers, organic peroxides, examples, aluminum nitrate, methyl, ethyl, ketone peroxide, class 6, division 6.1, 6.2, name of class or division, poisonous inhalation hazard, infectious substances, Pot uh, examples are potassium cyanide, Anthrax virus, class 7, name of class or division, radioactive, examples are uranium, class 8, name of class, corrosives, examples, battery fluid, class 9, name of class, miscellaneous hazard materials, examples are polychlorinated bisphazine, PCB, Class Orm D. Name Orm D. Other regulated materials domestic. Examples are food flavorings and medicines. 9.3 Communication Rules. 9.3.1 Definitions. Some words and phrases have special meanings when t talking about hazardous materials. Some of these may differ from meanings you are used to. The word and phrases in this section may be on your test. The meanings of other important words are in the glossary at the end of section 9. A materials hazard class reflects the risks associ associated with it. There are nine different hazard classes. The types of, figure of materials included in these nine classes are in figure 9-1. A shipping paper describes the hazardous material being transported. Shipping orders, bills of ladling, and manifests are all shipping papers. Figure 9.6 shows an example of, shipping, of a shipping paper. After an accident or hazardous material spill or leak, you may be injured and unable to communicate the hazards of the material you are transporting. Firefighters and police can prevent or reduce the amount of damage or injury that the scene at the scene if they know what hazardous materials are being carried your life and the lives of others may depend on quickly locating the shipping papers for that reason the rules require shippers to describe hazardous materials correctly and include an emergency response telephone number on shipping papers except as provided in 49CFR 604C. A driver of a motor vehicle containing hazardous materials shall ensure that the shipping paper is readily available and recognizable to authorities in the event of an accident or inspection. The shipping paper shall be distinctively tab tabbed, placed on top of the other shipping documents or placed in the pocket of the driver's door. Emergency response information must 
must accompany the shipping papers and shall be kept in the same manner as the shipping papers. Drivers to keep hazardous material shipping papers in a pouch on the driver's door or in clear view within immediate reach while seat belt is fastened while driving or on the vehicle's driver's seat when out of the vehicle. 9.3.2 Package Labels Shippers put diamond-shaped hazard warnings labels on most hazardous material packages. These labels inform others of hazards. If the diamond label won't fit on the package, shippers may put the label on a tag securely attached to the package. For example, compressed gas cylinders that will not hold a label, that will have tags or decals, labels look like the examples in figure 9.2. Figure 9.2 examples of hazmat labels. Figure 9.3 examples of hazmat placards. 9.3.3 List of regulated products. Placards. Placards are used to warn others of hazardous material. Placards are signs put on the outside of a vehicle and on bulk packages, which identify the hazard class of the cargo. A placard vehicle must have at least four identical placards. They are put on the front, rear, and both sides of the vehicle. See figure 9.3. Placards must be readable from all four directions. They are at least 10.8 inches square on point in a diamond shape. Cargo tanks and other bulk packaging display in the identification number of their contents on placards or orange panels or white square on point displays that are the same size as placards. <coughs> Identification numbers are a four-digit code used by first responders to identify hazardous materials. An identification number may be used to identify more than one chemical. The letters NA or UN will precede the identification number. The United States Department of Transportation's Emergency Response Guidebook, ERG, lists the chemicals and identification numbers assigned to them. There are three main lists used by shippers, carriers, and drivers when trying to identify hazardous materials. Before transporting a material, look for its name on the three lists. Some materials are on all lists, others are on only one. Always check the following lists. Section 172.101, the Hazardous Materials Table, Appendix, Appendix A to Section 172.101, the Lists of Hazardous Substances and Reportable Quantities, Appendix B to Section 172.101, the List of Marine Pollutants. The Hazardous Material Table. Figure 9.4 shows part of the Hazardous Materials Table, Column 1 tells which shipping, shipping models the entry affects and other information concerning the shipping description. The next five columns show each material shipping name, hazard class or division, identification number, packing group, and required labels. Figure 9.4, a sample from the hazardous material table. Symbols A, hazardous materials description and proper shipping name, alacidide, Anomia, hazard class or division, 9, identification numbers, UN1841, PG3, labels, codes, 9, special provisions, 172.102, IB8, 1P, IP4, IP6, I'm sorry. Packaging 173, exceptions 155, non-bulk 204, bulk 240. Six different symbols may appear in column one of the table. A plus sign shows the proper shipping name, hazard class, and packing group to use even if the material does not meet hazard class definition. A means the hazardous materials described in column 2 is subject 
is subject to the HMR only when offered to intend for transport by air unless it is a hazardous substance or hazardous waste. W means the hazardous material described in column 2 is subjected to the HMR only when offered or intended for transport by water unless it is a hazardous substance, hazardous waste, or marine pollutant. D means the proper shipping name is appropriate for, the de for describing materials for domestic transportation, but may not be proper for international transportation. I identifies a proper shipping name that is used to describe materials in international transportation. A different shipping name may be used when only domestic transportation is involved. G means this hazardous material described in column 2 is, generic, is a generic shipping name. A generic shipping name must be accompanied by a technical name on the shipping paper. A technical name is a specific chemical that makes the product hazardous. Column 2. A li lists the proper shipping name and describes the regulated materials. Entries in alphabetical order so you can more quickly find the right entry. The table shows proper shipping names in regular, in regular type. The shipping paper must show proper shipping names. Names show the italic names shown in the italics, not proper shipping names. Column three shows a materials hazard class or division, or entry forbidden. Never transport a forbidden material. Play card shipments based on quantity of hazard class. You can decide which play card to use if you know these three things. Materials hazard class, amount being shipped, amount of all hazardous material of all class on your vehicle. Column 4 lists the identification number for each proper shipping name. Identification numbers are preceded by the letters U, N, or N, A. The letters N, A are associated with proper shipping names that are only used within the United States and to and to and from Canada. The identification number must appear on the shipping paper as part of the shipping description and also appear on the package. It is it is also must appear on cargo tanks and other bulk packaging. Police and firefighters use this number to quickly identify the hazardous material. Column 5 shows in Roman numerals the packing the packing group PG assigned to a material a PG is not assigned to materials in class 2 and 7 division 6.2 and or MD ORMD packing groups group numerals cor correspond to the degree of danger presented by the material I equals great no 1 equals great 2 equals medium and 3 equals minor Column 6 shows the hazardous warning labels shippers must put on packages of hazardous materials. Some products require use of more than one label due to hazard being present. Column 7 lists codes for the additional special provision that applies to this material. When there is an entry in this column, you must refer to federal regulations for specific information. The meaning and requirements of special provisions are set forth in 49 CFR 172.102. The numbers 1 through 6 in this column mean the hazardous material is poisonous is a poison inhalation hazard PIH. PIH materials have special requirements for shipping papers, marking and placards. Column 8 is three is a three-part column showing the section number in 49 CFR 173 that cov that cover the packaging requirements for each hazardous material. Note, column 9 and 10 do not apply to transportation highways. Appendix A to 49 CFR 172.101, the list of hazardous substances and reportable quantities. The DOT and the EPA want to know about spills of hazardous substances. These substances are named 
Appendix A to 49 CFR 172.101. The list of hazardous substances and reportable quantities. Appendix A is divided into two tables. Table 1, hazardous substances other than red inclusive and Table 2, red inclusides. See Figure 9.5 for a sample of the list from Table 1. Column 2 shows each product's reportable quantity, RQ, in pounds and kilograms. Um, material meets the definition of an RQ if it's listed in the appendix, and each of the material being shipped meets or exceeds the quantity listed in the table for, mater for materials. RQ is not determined by using gross weight of the entire shipment only the weight per package. When these materials are being transported in a re reportable quantity or greater than greater in one package, the shipper displays the letters RQ on the shipping papers and package. The letters RQ may appear before or after the basic description. You or your employer must report any spills of these materials that occur in reportable quantities. If the words inhalation hazard appear on the shipping paper or package, the rules require display of poison inhalation hazard or poison gas placard as an operate. These placards are used in addition to other placards which may be required by the product's hazard class. Always display the hazard class placard and poisonous inhalation hazard placard, even for small amounts. Figure 9.5, a sample from Table 1, Appendix A, a list of hazardous substance and reportable quantities. Hazardous substance, phenyl meticam, reportable quantities, 100, 45.4 kilograms. Hazardous substance, phenomenal mercury atticate, reportable quantities, 100, in kilograms, 45.4. Phenyl 3, phenyl 3, reportable quantity is 100, kilograms is 45.4. Phosphate, phosphate, reportable quantity is 10, kilograms is 4.54. Phosphine, reportable quantity is 100, in kilograms it's 45.4. Phosphoric, phosphoric acid, Quantity is 5,000, kilograms is 2,270. Phosphoric acid, for nifrin ester, reportable quantities is 100, kilograms is 45.4. Phosphoric acid lead, 2 plus salt, 2 dot dot 3. Uh, reportable quantities is 10, 4.54. Appendix B to 49 CFR 172.101, List of Marine Pollutants. Appendix B is a listing of chemical that are, chemicals that are toxic to marine life. For highway transport, this list is only used for chemicals in bulk containers. The marine pollutant marking is not required on vehicle or package that bears a label or placard specified in subpart E or F of part 172. Any bulk packages of a marine pollutant must display the marine pollutant marking, a white triangle with a fish and an X through the fish. This marking is not a placard but must also be displayed on the outside of the vehicle. In addition, a notation must be made on the shipping paper near the description of the material marine pollutant. Continued in part two.